Christmas Art Journal Tutorial by Creative Katie. That's me, Karen Birchall. It's entitled Create Hope. Take time to hit the subscribe button in the lower right hand corner. Hit the option to be notified and you won't miss any videos. Here's a sneak peek of the finished page, Create Hope. I'm so thrilled with how this turned out. So I'm in my Canson Mixed Media Journal and I just you just saw the last two pages that I'd done. This is the very last page in the journal. So I had, with my silhouette, I had bought this cut file for this snow globe and I'm just using it as a tracer. Now, yes, I could have drawn this, but I, I, I admit it, I'm lazy. So I drew it in place because I want to put some texture on the page and I want to avoid putting texture where the snow globe is going. So I have this crafters workshop stencil and I can't remember the name of it. I'll hopefully I'll find it and I'll put it down below with other affiliate links to my Amazon store. So if there's any products on here that you would like to purchase, check the links down below or just go to my to the link to my Amazon store where I've um, organized art journal materials according to categories. I've kind of done the work for you. Full disclosure though, I do get a small percentage for every sale if you've walked through my store. So I'm using flexible modeling paste. You could use wall compound here, you could use um, other modeling paste or embossing paste, whatever you have. You could also put gesso through and that would work as well, especially if it's a thicker body gesso. I'm just applying it with a palette knife and sometimes it doesn't work so I scrape it off and try again. I thought this stencil looked like snowflake so that's why I kind of liked it. And I like this the edges because I'm hoping to use some sprays later on and I like how that catches in the texture. So while that's drying, I'm going to clean off the stencil, which is really important if you use modeling paste on your stencils. Do, a, take, do yourself a favor and clean them ASAP. So here's another cut file that I cut with my silhouette. And I just want to turn it into a silhouette black. And this is going to go into the snow globe. I cut this out on, it's a lightweight tag board that I just have in my stash and I'm using up. So I'm getting out the brown and I apologize for being off screen here. And I'm painting the base of the snow globe here. There I realized. And this is a small tube of Liquitex Basics that I bought in a kit of 24 that I got on a good Amazon deal. I'll put the link down below. It gives you all the varieties and the colors. And for some of them, even though now I have bigger tubes, some colors I don't, and I'm just using my little tubes. They're also very handy when you're going on create dates so you don't have to carry the heavy tubes with you. So I'm thinning it with a little bit of water. Um, you might see me spraying it here because it's a little bit thick. And then I'm just kind of doing a thatch look. So it looks like a basket weave. Just give it some texture. And that just makes interest on your page. So I'm going to use some white gesso on the side here and I'm going to stamp a snowflake stamp into it and stamp it into the snow globe. Now this didn't show up as well as I would have liked. You do see little bit glimmers of it later on but it really didn't show up the way I envisioned. I think next time what I might do is paint the gesso inside the snow globe and stamp into the wet gesso. I think I might get a better impression. 
I live and learn. You can see the little bit of snowflakes there. I'm just cleaning the snowflake stencil. So I've got my Dilutions paints and I have the Calypso Teal there at the top. Um, Midnight Blue, London Fog, and the Green. And I'm just applying them. Now the Calypso Teal I find is very, very transparent. Too transparent for my liking and you'll see me sub, sub it out and use Vibrant Turquoise which is a little more opaque and just a better color for most things that I do. Now normally I wouldn't have put the green in here, but that's something that I've learned by playing with colors. A little bit of green or a little bit of yellow um, in, in a background that's otherwise blue or another, a different, different color always seems to make that page extra special. So I'm just using the sponge applicators, the Ranger blending tools from, and just um, covering. As usual, um, with the dilutions paint, you usually need a couple layers of blending. It goes through that ugly duckling stage inevitably. And I'm just gonna keep playing here till I like what I see. In retrospect, I probably should have um, done this first and then painted the base. It all worked out in the end. Using the texture paste under below, or if you had collage papers below, it catches, and that's what adds so much interest to your page. If you don't have Dilutions paints, you can do the same thing applying acrylic paints. Try the same colors, mix, match them, apply with your fingers, apply with a sponge applicator, apply with a brush. As always, I'm cleaning off the uh, applicators onto a coffee filter, which will be used for collage work on some other job page. So I'm using my folk art technique here to float or to shade or highlight. So I've got black and I've just put it on the tip of it and you have a little bit of water and it just kind of it's darker where you put the point and lighter elsewhere. Now in between when you apply it you have to let it dry in between. Back in the day I did folk art we didn't know no one ever thought of drying it with a heat tool or a hair dryer, so we have, you had to wait and be patient. So I'm just putting, I'm using an angle brush here, but you can use a flat brush, putting it on one side and spreading it, getting it into the brush so that you get that kind of look of shading. And it's just to play, to play with the right amount of water. Sometimes I'm dipping the other end in water to get a little bit more water going so it floats better and other times I'm touching it to the paper towel or the cloth there and getting the water off. If you don't want to attempt this you can outline this with your Stabilo All pencil or watercolor pencil and get the same effect. Now this is Liquitex heavy body paint and it's tra transparent mixing white or zinc white. And this is something that I learned um, watching um, tutorials by painting, painting with Jane. And she did this with her Christmas ornaments. And it occurred to me that this would be a perfect way of doing the same thing um, with the snow globe because you want it to show but it's see-through, it's clear glass. And so basically I'm doing the same kind of technique as I did with my shading for the base of the snow globe. 
you just want it to be a little darker on the edge and then fade out. You don't want to get that harsh line. The transparent mixing white is different from the regular white and Jane has an excellent video that explains these differences. But the transparent mixing white or zinc white is very transparent so it's perfect for this kind of application. I'm just touching it up. I don't want a harsh line anywhere else. I just kind of want it to fade out. And giving it a quick dry so I don't smudge it. So another cut file from from Silhouette and I'm going to glue that on but I want to splatter it with white paint first so I'm just blocking off the um, the rest of the um, page and I'm thinning some Liquitex Basics and going to splatter with a fan brush and I got into trouble here because I didn't wait till it dried so um, I ended up touching up and cleaning up messes. Anyone else impatient with the drying process and ends up making more work for yourself? And right there I make a mess so I go in and I clean it up which is the nice part of acrylic if your bait if your base is acrylic you can you have a couple seconds there minutes to get in with a wet cloth or a baby wipe and clean up the mess and start fresh so I'm putting some silver on a um, cut and dry foam and I'm just rubbing the silver on top to give some highlights to the texture and of course you gotta have the shimmer it's me after all and I just like the icy usually I'm go with the gold but today I went with silver just adding more I have other plans to make this texture pop even more, so this isn't it. But you can see how it really just made it stand out. And I'm just edging it with the silver. Using matte gel medium to adhere At some point shortly after this, I realized that I did not center this in the snow globe. And I spent the next little while trying to convince myself that that was okay. Yeah, it wasn't. I had to fix that problem. And you'll see how I did that in a few. So I got out several of my Lindy Starbursts and I have Afternoon Delight Denim and a green that comes with the Christmas one and a pearlized one. And I'm just tapping it on and spraying it with water and turning the page to get it to move so I can get the color and the shimmer. The Starbursts line um, of the sprays is two-toned and it has mica powder so you get the sheen in there you can buy the set the fat fat fabios flat fabios fat fabios I'm not sure which I don't have them they don't have the shine and the shimmer I'm just adding it over time to see till I get a look and you can see the difference what it makes for when you compare the ones that have it already and the ones that don't and I'm adding the green because again I've got that little bit of green peeking through in the background it's not a lot but this is one more place that I'm adding the green 
And when you do that, have the same color in different places, that leads to cohesiveness on your page. As always, when you're doing taking the lids off, be very, very careful because this makes a huge mess when you spill. Uh, don't ask me how I know that. Yvonne, do you know how I know that? So you can't see as much of the shine in the photo, but you can see how the dark blue and the dark green have just added that little bit of extra interest to the page. But there is a shimmer. The blue has a teal shimmer to it that is to die for. I think that's my alt altogether most favorite uh, Starburst is the Afternoon Delight Denim. And I'm just drawing this. I don't want it to get outside of where the stencil and paste is. I should have gone around with the uh, liner brush or the floating earlier, but here you're just seeing doing it, me doing it with my Stabilo All Pencil. Just going around it and then just activating it with a round brush and water. So there's lots of ways to achieve the same effect. Don't think you need to go out and buy every single one of the products. I try to use different products so that you can see that if you have that product, it does have these different uses, but don't think that just because I or somebody else has them that it's a must have. And because my Stabilo is right there and I'm too lazy to grab my gelato, find my gelatos or my Neo Color 2, I'm just scribbling on and activating with water with my finger just to get that little bit of black on the edge. And that ties with the black of the focal point in the snow globe. Signing my name because I, I realize so many times I forget to sign. And then I solved the problem of the misplaced, misaligned um, focal point. I have a cut stencil with poinsettia or holly leaves, and I'm just masking off some of it and applying a coat of white gesso through this stencil. And then I'm going to come in with some dilutions paints because they're right handy and paint the leaf green and the holly berries red. And it was kind of a happy accent, but adding that green really made all the other greens that are in there pop on the page. So several weeks ago, I had cut out these letters. There's, there was a whole collection of inspirational words on this one um, cut file. And I was going to use the word believe, which is there, but then I decided I like the way the saying create hope. As I think that's what Christmas does for us, we create hope. and. Um, so I like that and I like the script. So you don't have to use your cut files as they are presented. You can take pieces, bits and pieces from this one and that one and use them in a variety of ways on your pages. I'm giving it a quick dry. I kind of like how the script E at the end kind of curls up against my name. So I'm applying these with gel medium. And at the top, I don't want to put it on the page because remember I put the Lindy Starburst and they are not permanent. So I worked really hard to get all that shine and shimmer and, and whatever. And I really don't want to disturb it as much. Also, if you put matte medium on it, you tend to dull it, so it kind of defeats the purpose. 
I'm trying to be careful there. Here I can put it right onto the uh, base of the snow globe because it's acrylic paint. and using my heat tool to dry. I'm going to get out my pouring medium. I want the words to shine and I want the focal point to shine. So I am using a small round brush and I'm painting on pouring medium on top to give it a little bit of shine to make it really stand out on the page. This isn't the intended use of pouring medium. But this is what I use it for. I, I discovered I really like the shine that it has. Um, and I've used it on numerous things to, to give that effect. You could use glossy accents. You could probably use um, gloss medium, liquid medium. It would probably work as well. Or just omit that step. When you add the shine, I find it also makes the colors, intensifies the colors, and even the black, it makes it stand out a little bit more. And I really didn't want to add anything on top of the letters, I wanted to leave them black. So as I'm drawing this, I get the idea that the snow globe is glass and should all be shiny. So I just pour the pouring medium on there. It is not self-leveling, so you need to move it around with the brush. And this is going to make it look like it's glass. And I'm just thrilled that I thought of this and actually off camera I give it another coat just to make it that much more glossy. And you can see in some of the pictures later that the, the shine is definitely there. There you go, you can see. Just made that a little extra special. So here are some pictures of parts of it close up. You can see the shine on the letters there. And close up, you can see some of the starbursts, some of the mica powders and the nooks and crannies of the modeling paste. So I'd like to wish all my subscribers a happy holidays and a Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for subscribing and watching my videos. Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, love to hear from you. Bye.